Thank you very much, Neera, and good morning, everybody. On behalf of Kenplas Sanmar Limited, I extend a very warm welcome to everyone joining us on our call today. On this call, we have our Chief Financial Officer, Ryan Murlidharan, Dr. Krishna Kumar Langachari, the Deputy Managing Director of our Custom Manufactured Chemicals Division, and FGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. I hope everyone has had an opportunity to go through the financial results and investor presentation, which have been uploaded on the Stock Exchange website and on our company's website. FY24 has been one of the toughest years for the company in recent times, with the year being marked with challenges on all fronts. The PVC industry bore the brunt of excessive dumping of low price resin by China and other countries, resulting in pressure on domestic prices and compression of margins. Though the base PVC import volumes in FY24 witnessed a marginal drop com compared to FY23, domestic prices were impacted due to low price imports from the European Union, China, Malaysia, and Thailand. Suspension PVC imports were up 16% during FY24 compared to FY23. India was China's top export destination for suspension PVC during the year, with around 860,000 tons of suspension PVC coming into India from China. This was a third of all the suspension PVC imports into India during the year 23-24. Prices of both suspension PVC and paste PVC were lower by 19% and 12% respectively in FY24 as compared to the earlier year. Some signs of revival have, however, been witnessed on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis with a marginal increase in prices in Q4 of FY24. There are, however, a number of positive factors which bode well for the future. These include the continuing strong demand for PVC resin resulting from a boom in real estate and infrastructure sectors, the issue of a quality control order on PVC resin, which, when it comes into effect, would ensure that substandard quality product is not imported into India, and the significant progress in the investigation for imposition of anti-dumping duty on PVC imports. Collectively, these are likely to lead to a correction in PVC prices over the next two to three quarters. We believe that the period of strife for the PVC industry is coming to an end, and we expect to turn the corner with a better performance from this year onwards. The other chemicals business comprising of caustic soda, chloromethanes, hydrogen peroxide, and refrigerant gas continues to be adversely affected due to the oversupply situation in the country. Chloromethanes and caustic soda prices in FY24 have been the lowest over the last three years. These witness further correction on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. This business is likely to stabilize over the next three to four quarters. The global agrochemicals industry faced significant challenges during the year, including slowing global demand and crop-related issues due to erratic weather conditions affecting the whole agrochemical sector and the dumping of Chinese chemicals in the market, which led to reduced price realizations. Our custom manufactured chemicals business was adversely impacted during the year due to these factors. The impact, however, was partly offset by commencement of supplies of new products under the first two LOIs signed in the last 12 to 15 months. CMC division's revenues were therefore lower by around 13% compared to the last fiscal. On a positive note, the CMC division has recently signed the fourth LOI with an agrochemical innovator for an advanced intermediate for a new active ingredient. The LOI covers a period of five years, and commercial supplies are expected to begin from calendar 2025. This will be manufactured in phase two of a new multipurpose production block, which is expected to be commissioned soon. The division is expected to see the positive impact of the new products in the upcoming quarters. Amidst all these headwinds, we closed FY24 with a top line of 3,923 crore rupees and an EBITDA of 26 crore rupees. During this difficult period, 
the company has been resilient and focused on setting up capacities and capabilities which are likely to bear fruit with expected improvement in market condition. We commissioned the 41,000 ton page PVC expansion project during Q4 of the last year. We are happy to inform you that the product from this new plant has met the quality expectations of our customers and it is expected that we will ramp up to 100% operating rate by the end of Q1 of the current year. This capacity is aimed at fulfilling domestic demand through import substitution and will further strengthen our leadership position in PACE PVC in India. Further, the construction of Phase 2 of the CMC expansion project is underway, and we expect to complete this by the end of the first quarter of the current year. Now I would request our CFO Muli Dharan to share the financial highlights for the quarter and full year. Muli? Thank you, Rafmar, and a very good morning to all the participants on the call. Talking about quarterly performance, uh, this quarter saw some improvement in performance on a few on few basis. While the revenue from operations declined by 8% on an OAOI basis, largely on account of lower realizations per ton for all the products, on few or few, or few basis, the revenues increased by 18%, primarily on account of better realizations of both suspension PVC and paste PVC. During the quarter, our gross margin on a Q1 co basis remained almost flat at 31% level. On the expenses side, employee expenses increased by 22% on a sequential basis, primarily due to higher manpower in the CMC business and the new PACE PVC facility. Other expenses remained flat at around 255 crores on a year-on-year -year basis as well as Q1 Q basis. EBITDA for the quarter stood at 21 crores as compared to the EBITDA loss of 7 crores in the previous quarter. Our finance cost for the quarter increased to 51 crores compared to 47 crores in the previous quarter, primarily due to the impact of project loans. The net loss for the quarter was rupees 31 crores as against net loss of rupees 89 crores in Q3 FI24. Coming to the full year numbers, as indicated earlier, from a financial performance perspective, this was one of the most challenging fiscal years in the recent past. The revenue from operations declined by 21% as compared to the last fiscal, mainly due to a significant reduction in prices of all the products. While the sales volumes of PVC resins were marginally higher compared to the previous year, the other chemical sales volume witnessed a drop in the current year as compared to FI23, mainly due to lower volumes in cost of caustic soda and chloromethanes. On the expenses side, other expenses decreased from 1,114 crores in FI23 to 1,019 crores in FI24. This decrease is primarily due to the reduction in power and fuel costs by 71 crores and freight and handling costs by around 23 crores. EBITDA for the year stood at rupees 26 crores. The finance cost increased from 154 crores to 181 crores during the year, mainly due to the project loans available from the page PVC and the CMC divisions expansion projects. Net loss for the year was at 158 crores. Uh, like Rampmar mentioned earlier, we have started seeing signs of improvement in the PVC prices now. With the measures that Rampmar mentioned, we expect things to turn around gradually on the PVC front. This, combined with the higher volumes from Pace PVC and CMC projects, will add to the profit of the company in FI2425. With this, we conclude the presentation and open the floor for further discussion. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is on the line of Sanjay Chain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking the question. Uh, Sanjay, may I go to speak a little louder, please? Now, is it good? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, good morning, Ram, sir. 
Uh, first question on the standalone business again. Um, if I see the gross uh, spread for SPVC has gone up from 10 rupees to 15 rupees in this quarter sequentially. Um, I hope the same thing would be visible in the page PVC as well and uh, custom manufacturer generally is a higher gross margin business. Despite all this, our standalone gross profit margin sequentially has declined now to almost only 40%. Uh, what explains the lower gross profit margin in the uh, standalone business, which is largely page PVC and uh, bulk and uh, uh, custom manufacturing um, did the sequential decline of 600 basis point in the gross profit margin uh, sanjay good morning this is uh, morley uh, while we did see improvement uh, in the suspension pvc margins in the last quarter on a sequential basis mm -hmm. this is more or less flat and uh, we did see some softening in the chloromethanes and caustic soda as well. Uh, these two resulted in the grass margins being slightly lower. Also on the CMC front as well, uh, we are coming, these are new products that are being developed. Like we had indicated earlier, these new products take some time to stabilize and reach the desired contribution level. So in the initial phases, the margin levels are slightly lower. So a combination of this space PVC more or less remained flat. There was some softening of chloromethanes and caustic soda. And CMC, we are in the sort of a, a ramp up curve in terms of new products. All of this resulted in the gross margins uh, falling down on a sequential basis. This also means that as the thing stabilized, there will be a significant improvement in this margin, say in FI25. Will that be a fair assumption? Uh, Sunday, good morning. This is Ram Kumar here. Hi, sir. Uh, FY25, we do expect it to definitely be a better year than FY24 was. Uh, like we said, FY24 was a difficult year with a uh, lot of challenges that were thrown at us. But we believe that we have, uh, uh, you know, the things have stabilized, especially in the PVC business, both on paste and suspension. A large part of the problems were created largely by the dumping that we faced uh, from, especially from China, uh, and that is uh, being arrested through a variety of measures. Uh, the first uh, measure that uh, is uh, that has actually been announced is the quality control order, but that will take a little longer for it to actually come into effect. Uh, the second one is the anti-dumping duty on base PVC. The provisional findings have been announced. Uh, and, and it is awaiting the final gazetting. Once that happens, we believe that some kind of discipline will come back into pricing and the dumping problem will be arrested. So we do believe uh, that the intrinsic strength of the PVC business in India still continue to be uh, as uh, strong as they, they were. Uh, the demand is still very strong. The demand growth is there. It has always been, especially in the last one to one and a half years, the problem has only been to do with the dumping, the indiscriminate dumping at very low prices. Uh, the industry is okay with the actual arrival of imports, but what it is not okay with is uh, this, uh, discounting of the imports at such kind of unreasonable prices. And I believe that that is getting corrected this year. Super helpful. But, but a follow-up there, uh, now that we have an expanded capacity in page PVC, we have uh, quality measures and probably listing of ADD on the uh, page PVC, do you expect this uh, new capacity to consume fast and margins to also improve in an overall page PVC business? We would uh, hope so. We are ramping up a new capacity. We commissioned it towards the end of February, and we believe that by end of June, we would be at 100%. The, the product, we are happy to inform you that the product has been received very well by our customers, and uh, it has uh, met all the expectations, if not surpassed the uh, quality expectations. So uh, this is something that we believe uh, selling this uh, product in the market would, 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 be, uh, would not be a challenge. Uh, the price improvement with all of these measures coming in should uh, logically in improve our markets, and we are confident of that. Just one bit on it. Now that it is a VCM to page PVC versus earlier EDC to page PVC, uh, what will be the differential in the contribution margin for both this? The differential could possibly be uh, you know around seven thousand to. Uh, 10,000 rupees, I think it's uh, dependent on the price of VCM, et cetera, around that time. 
uh, but that's what it would be got it oh, sorry i'm stretching this a little bit the last bit one on the custom manufacturing now we have fourth alloy in the place now with all this fourth alloy what is the capacity utilization are we looking up saying 25 and 26 and uh, what is the product pipeline looking like for the uh, beyond the show hi krishna good morning yep. so uh, so actually we are reviewing the capacity utilization of the new production block in light of uh, this new uh, letter of intent and um, hopefully within the next quarter you know, we will have a better clarity on um, on, on this uh, but fairly confident about uh, uh, the the steady state capacity utilization um, uh, you know reaching um, uh, reaching our targeted levels uh, sooner rather than later um, so that's um that's where we are on because of the new uh, new letter of intent we have some commercial trials of that next year um sometime during calendar year 25 and um, you know we are also looking at the projections the customers given and then mapping it within the asset that we have uh, to get a better understanding of that so uh, that's a work in progress as we speak and new products pipeline how does it look like beyond this four no quite strong um quite strong we uh, we commercialized um or, or sorry we ran three or we are running a third campaign um third product in the new production block um the the first letter of intent you know that's an ongoing business that we continue to uh, manufacture continue to ramp up in the phase one capacity uh, and in the phase one the balance capacity you know we've already um, uh, we've already commercialized one product uh, the customer has validated and so we are actually going to start a repeat campaign of the same uh, sometime uh, towards the end of this uh, next quarter uh, of uh, of this year and uh, we are currently making a third uh, third product in the phase one uh, phase one asset uh, as we speak right got it got it thanks for answering all those questions and uh, the support for the coming quarter thank, thank you. you thank you thank you the next question is on the line of ankur perwal from access capital please go ahead uh, yeah hi sir thanks for the opportunity uh, just continuing with the uh, with the uh, the cmc part uh, the phase 2 as i understand you mentioned will be getting commissioned by the end of this quarter and a phase 1 was around 3 billion capex phase 2 was given to around 4 billion capex the loi that we have signed till now which is loi 1 2 and 3 they will be fully utilizing phase 1 or there will be some capacity which will be left uh the loi 1 and 2 will be used majority of phase 1 we will still be able to make uh, other small campaigns uh and it's about steady state capacity not uh, you know not not today uh, let's say steady state is 3 years from now approximately um, so LO, the loi 1 and 2 the plan was to uh, make it in phase 1 and uh, the third loi and the fourth one that we have we are now mapping both of them against the phase 2 uh, phase 2 capacity uh, that will be available and again the phase 2 is in a process of being handed over you know it's a uh, it's it's basically phase 2 is within the existing structure of um, you know the the total uh, total capacity and so there are uh, uh, you know reactors and vessels that are in the process of being handed over to operation as we speak so it will be a it will be a continuous process over the next few months um, before it's completely finished sure and 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 phase 3 and 4 uh, and, and let's say all these four lois will utilize the full capacity for phase 1 plus phase 2 will that be a fair understanding we are reviewing that i mean now i, I don't I, because the the just announced the, the last one and um, um you yeah, again the uh, the the third loi we are actually going through lab and pilot trials as we speak right now and um, you know so when that will be brought into a commercial uh, campaign you know it is still it's still being worked out and similarly you know we have this the fourth new loi uh, we have indications of uh, what we need to make next year but the exact timing of that is still being worked out and and so based on this 
you know, we'll have much better clarity on uh, the utilization of the phase two capacity. Uh, so my, my hope is by next quarter we'll have an update. Sure, sure. That, that's healthy, and uh, and accordingly there will be a, a, a whatever you know a third phase expansion over here in the CSM business. This is the new molecules and the LOS that we find. Yeah, so we we have indicated that uh, that's our plan. As and when we have significant visibility of uh, steady state capacity of existing assets, we would uh, start looking at uh, uh, the next uh, phase of the investment. Sure. Uh, sir, secondly, on the, the R&D side, uh, you had highlighted earlier, you know, uh, pretty aggressive work going over there in terms of new molecule launches, etc. Uh, if you can, you know, share some light there, any, any new progresses or maybe expansion in terms of the core chemistry skills? Yeah, sure. No, that's a good question. We, uh, we actually, last quarter, we commissioned our second phase of our uh, R&D expansion. So, uh, you know, so we, you know, we have been committing ourselves to you know keep expanding uh, both our R and D and pilot resources on a pilot assets and capabilities on an ongoing basis. Uh, so the second phase of our um, you know R and D um, uh, labs and assets were um, you know commissioned uh, last quarter. And similarly, we are actually going through an expansion on our in our pilot um, uh, pilot scale capabilities as well. And uh, Again, the second phase of our pilot plant expansion will be coming on stream uh, uh, sometime later part of uh, next month. And again, our intent here is to be a little bit proactive rather than be reactive um, uh, because the pipeline continues to be strong. And uh, so from a, from a number of products in the pipeline standpoint, uh, and I, I mentioned that we commercialized three new products last, last year, um, um, or above our current ones, and uh, the pipeline uh, where we have on the pre-commercial and developmental stages, uh, we have over 15 products um, that we are working on uh, right now. Great, great, great to hear that. Uh, uh, shifting gears to the uh, you know the, the PVC business here, uh, Ram sir, if you can you know share some highlight in terms of how you are seeing the the global recovery on the pricing front. As well as on the backward side, uh, you know, any uh, the issue that that the industry was facing on the EDC availability earlier, is that all settled or how things are ramping up there? Uncle, uh, this is on uh, first your first question, which was about what is playing out on the PVC. Uh, one is that demand is very strong. Let me take suspension PVC first. Demand is very strong in India. Uh, the issue is only being the availability or the excess availability from China. Uh, in in uh, China, the property sector has been under stress, and therefore there's been a lot of PVC that was exported out of China. In fact, uh, in, in the last financial year, that is FY24, uh, the imports from China were around 860,000 tons. So the total import into India of around 2.6 million tons. So that is a 33% share. A uh, few things are happening. One is that uh, even within China, the earlier uh, uh, pricing that was there is proving to be unsustainable, and therefore we are seeing an increase in the price quotes emerging from China in the last couple of weeks. The, the futures market in China has also shot up significantly, and, and there are no quotes now that are available. At, even at the higher levels, there are not much quotes available from China. Uh, you would have uh, read about the Chinese government having announced something like $135 million uh, 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 stimulus package for uh, reviving the property sector in China, and that seems to be uh, driving a lot of the demand, uh, the revival, uh, so to speak. It will play out over the next few months, but already we can see some green shoots emerging. And uh, ocean freights have also gone up significantly. What used to be around $40, $50 from uh, Northeast Asia to India, now it's now at $80, $90, and more importantly, containers are not available. So all of this is resulting in uh, both delayed arrival of materials as also an increase in the cost and prices that are being quoted into India. So that is on uh, the, you know, uh, the suspension PVC part. Space PVC as well is having, uh, 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 you know, the demand is pretty strong as far as India is concerned. Uh, we have, of course, commissioned our uh, new plant and therefore we are well positioned. 
provisional finding has been issued by the authorities on anti-dumping duty. Uh, this uh, will, we are hoping that this will get gazetted uh, soon. And once that happens, then this irrational pricing will uh, be stopped. So I think uh, we are set for uh, a decent uh, revival in prices and margins. Okay, great, sir. Thank you for the elaborate answer and all the rest. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Lionel Sadan Singh from Green Portfolio. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. I am audible. Yes, please. Yeah. Sir, firstly, as you mentioned, we are seeing price improvement for suspension and fresh PVC in recent quarters. Sir, uh, so how confident you are in sustaining this upward trend? And uh, sir, also, what is the current price for fresh PVC and suspension PVC? And also, sir, VCM right now. All right. So basically, if you look at uh, you know the price that is coming in, there has been an improvement, but we do need all these measures because this uh, dumping that we have witnessed over the last 18 months is something that needs to be addressed, and therefore that needs uh, those measures are important for the industry to actually uh, uh, sustain and further invest because a lot of new investment is also being planned in India, and we need these measures to uh, come in and be put in place so that these uh, large investments can uh, start making commercial sense. That is on one side, but there is, yes, uh, there has been a good trend, and we hope that this trend will continue. As far as the current prices of uh, uh, suspension, I think uh, suspension prices right now are at around $830 to $850. Uh, uh, VCM is at around $600 to $620. Pace PVC is... Uh, anywhere from 1050 to $1,100. These are all very dynamic and they keep, they keep changing with newer offers coming in. Okay, okay, sir. And, sir, has there been any recent progress on addressing this issue, whatever uh, China is dumping the materials, uh, chemicals and all? So what is the progress in the industry for this issue? Uh, you're talking about the anti-dumping? Yeah, yeah, anti-dumping, sir. As far as, uh, no, we had already as an industry, uh, we had filed for an anti-dumping action on both PACE and suspension. PACE was filed uh, towards the end of September last year and suspension was filed uh, a little later. Uh, PACE actually has come up, but we have had the provisional findings been, uh, have been announced. Uh, anti-dumping duties have been announced on uh, China, Malaysia, Taiwan, Thailand, and Norway. Uh, at a range of around 115 to 600 dollars, uh, this is awaiting gazetting before it comes into effect, uh, and, and the finance ministry will need to review and gasset it. And, and we are hopeful that that uh, will happen uh, soon. Uh, as far as suspension is concerned, the investigation has been initiated and it is being uh, looked at. Uh, we are hopeful that uh, we will see some action there as well. Okay. Sir, and my last question is about the fourth LOI that we have signed. Sir, any rough idea how much uh, revenue for potential does it uh, does the product uh, possess in near future? What we can expect from it? Now this uh, uh, it, it's an LOI which covers uh, a period of around uh, five years. Uh, over a period of five years, is expected to generate around 500 crores of revenue. Uh, that's based on the uh, initial volume commitments that we have got. That will ramp up over a period of time, uh, steadily over a period of time. Roughly, we can consider it around 500 crores of revenue. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. That's all. Again. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask yes. a question. Next question is from the line of Kirtan Mehta from BUB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. In terms of you indicated the current prices for suspension PVC as well as space PVC, would you be also able to indicate the current level of the gross margin and how does it compare with the mid cycle level? Uh, Ram is talking about a price of around 830. All of these are pre duty prices. 830 uh, dollars for. Uh, PVC, somewhere around 830 to 850 dollars, and VCM around 610. 
So, which on a pre-DT level gives us around $220 per ton, uh, which is sort of on a reasonable margin level. Uh, effectively, uh, somewhere around uh, two, two, 240 levels would be a good margin. We are not too far. We are not too far away from that. As long as the prices hold and they don't fall and we don't see any inventory impact, I think uh, these margins alone will start giving us a reasonable contribution uh, on the uh, suspension PVC side. On the PACE PVC, it's more driven by because we uh, make a significant part of our EDC now. So there it's not so much driven by the uh, PV, PACE PVC EDC prices. It's more uh, in-house uh, margins there. Uh, I think the prices are steadily moving up. Uh, it may take maybe uh, once the uh, ADD notification comes through and we see the impact of that, uh, we can see a significant improvement in the margins in the pace PVC as well. Thank you, sir. In terms of the ADD notifications, we had one five-year period where this ADD was applicable. So from the WTO rules, is there any limitation in terms of the number of years the ADD campaign can run? And are there any buffer period required before the second ADD can, duty is actually put in place? Not, not, not uh, really, uh, Kishan. I, uh, so long as you're able to prove the uh, presence of both dumping and injury, you can have continuing ADDs uh, going through. You just need to do, uh, you know, there is usually a midterm review, then there is a sunset review, and if at the time of these reviews, it is established that the injury continues to exist and the threat of dumping still continues to exist, then there will uh, continue to be this action. It is only one of the two, either injury or dumping is absent, that there will be a break in this. Right. And in terms of post PVC, we had the historical precedences where Edward Levitt were there similar precedences also for the suspension PVC as well? Yes, please. Uh, both suspension and paste have been uh, the uh, duties, uh, anti-dumping duties have been levied in the past and uh, a few times in the past. Right. So one last question on the customs manufacturing interview. You narrated about the phase one and phase two blocks in terms of the pipeline. What is the current utilization level at the current block? Are we still sort of witnessing a lower utilization in the old block as well because of the global agrofin slowdown? So, the, again, the, the phase one got commissioned uh, last year in um, August, September time period, and uh, we have been ramping up on um, the three different products in that, in that asset. And um, so we expect you know, the steady state capacity utilization, you know, to continue to keep increasing over the next um, couple of years. And in terms of uh, the, the impacts of the, the global agrochemical demand, it's impacted more our existing products in our old blocks uh, rather than it's not had any impact on our, uh, on the new production block and the new products uh, that we have commercialized. Right, so in terms of just a follow up, in terms of the impact on the existing products in the old blocks that we are taking, how much is the utilization which has come down, and when do we expect that to normalize? How much time would it take to normalize that part of utilization? Well, again, that's up in the air. I mean, it's not come down significantly, it uh, continues to be healthy, um, but it it uh, but it has come down so um, you know we have to wait and see because we don't have uh, uh, you know the the downturn itself there, there are some impacts due to the downturn that everyone is um, uh, facing even now and um, you know we will have some better clarity as the year progresses sure sir thanks for this clarification <laughs> participants you may press star and one to ask the question Next question is from the line of Madhav from Fidelity International. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, my question was on the um, on the CNC business. It's a very basic question. Uh, why do we categorize these uh, orders as uh, letters of intent rather than like a firm contract? Like, what is the difference between the two? Just wanted to just get the broad understanding of the question. Yeah, so now the the letter of intent is the first step. And uh, you know that sort of uh, 
gives us an indication of commitment uh, related to volume. Uh, typically, these letter of intent, then as we get closer to commercialization, as we get closer to the commercial campaign, uh, translate into a, a supply agreement. Um, so uh, it's just a, you know, a, a stage-wise process um, that, that goes from a letter of intent to a, to a supply agreement. Okay. Uh, so so the first uh, LOI, which I think we signed, uh, could you just remind us, please, that uh, when was that signed? And I, I'm assuming that some revenues have started for the first LOI. Uh, so yes. is that like now a supply agreement or a firm contract, or is it still categorized as an LOI? Just trying to uh, get some sense here. Yeah, so the first one was signed sometime in the November 22 time period. Uh, we started the commercial campaign, let's say, in uh, September. And, uh, you know, we already have a, a draft supply agreement on that particular, you know, for that particular product, which is just, uh, you know, the commercial terms and, uh, and uh, the commercial aspects of the agreement itself has been, you know, pretty much finalized. Um, so just to give you a background on how the first one progressed. The second one, uh, as I indicated, uh, we had an initial uh, trial campaign. Uh, we supply quantities, and uh, we now have confirmation that uh, uh, the material has met the customer's uh, end product performance requirements. Uh, so now, you know, we are planning on uh, the second campaign. So now, at this point, now that we have qualified, you know, we will that LOI will move. You know, we will work on a supply agreement uh, uh, with the customer. So that's the sort of the way um, how it progresses. Okay, okay, understood. And just on the uh, the suspension PVC business, um, could you give us some sense? You know, we understand that uh, there was a lot of aggressive um, sort of dumping of uh, sort of intensity from the Chinese players. Uh, but uh, just and of course the government ADD and the QCO should help. Uh, but what's happening in China on the PVC business is fundamentally like is there uh, some sort of demand uh, recovery there? Or, or is it still like status quo that you know because of the bad real estate situation, it still remains a uh, challenge? It, it, it is uh, still a work in progress in China. I think the, the first green shoots are emerging. Uh, the government has announced some very serious intent uh, to uh, solve the problem that they're having in their property sector, which, as you know, accounts for almost a quarter of their GDP. Therefore, it is very important for their own economic growth. And uh, they have been spending a lot of time on stimulating that. Uh, and I think uh, uh, the, the most serious efforts have just recently been announced. And that has seen uh, a recent surge in, in the futures prices on the Dalian uh, Commodity Exchange for PVC. And we are also seeing the impact of that in the quotes that we are hearing in India. Uh, we believe that uh, a lot of the unsold inventory, uh, local authorities, I believe, have been asked to buy over some of the, most of that and convert it into affordable housing. Uh, there will be some construction happening. And then even from the point of view of the customers, uh, they are being uh, uh, incentivized uh, to, uh, uh, you know, in terms of uh, more favorable borrowing terms uh, to apply for uh, new, to buy new houses. Now, all of this obviously will take some time to play out, but we are seeing the impact of it right now in terms of prices. So that, is, uh, that was the point that we were making. And so just one last follow-up on the suspension PVC business was uh, over the next, like, uh, let's say, uh, two years or three years, how much of the new supply of suspension PVC that, that you see, which is more realistically expected to come uh, on the ground? Where, you know, some work is started uh, by the players. So if you could give us some sense of the supply pipeline for the next two, three years, like how many million ton capacity could be added globally? Thank you. So uh, one thing that is happening here is that there are uh, two big capacities have been uh, uh, announced. One uh, will come up uh, around 1.25 million tons. The other, which was originally announced at 2 million and then later we believe uh, uh, toned down to around a million tons, but that might come in phases if, if and when a final investment decision is taken. Uh, all of this capacity may be, therefore, we believe that maybe. Uh, uh, 1.75 million tons could come in the next uh, by the end of the third year from now, uh, third year or the fourth year from now. But if you look at that, uh, demand by that time would have grown to an extent where uh, the gap, which is currently 2.5 million tons, would uh, increase maybe around four and a half to five million tons or even more. And uh, if if that happens, 
then essentially we would be running on a treadmill that's going faster than us in terms of the the demand supply gap. Demand would still be far larger than the supply. Uh, this is global addition we're talking about, right? Sorry? Uh, this is the global capacity additions, right, for suspension of PVC? I'm talking only about the Indian capacity additions, the Indian no. uh, situation. Okay, and on the global side, if you could add, please. All right, go ahead. Globally. Okay, so if you're interested in knowing the global additions that are likely to come, there is a little bit of capacity that's coming up in the U.S., which is roughly around 400,000 tons or so, which will come up at the end of the year. Uh, maybe another million tons, uh, million and a half tons coming up over the next uh, year and a half or two in China. Uh, there is no, not, no capacity coming up in uh, Europe. Uh, no further capacity will come up in the U.S. because they have certain regulatory challenges. Uh, there, there could be some capacity coming up in the Middle East, uh, which would possibly be around 700,000 tons or so, uh, 750,000 tons. Uh, Southeast Asia, maybe a little bit, nothing, uh, uh, maybe another 200,000 or 300,000 tons coming up. Northeast Asia, other than China, nothing really is planned. So you would uh, actually uh, see a pretty tight situation because as demand uh, keeps growing, not much of capacity addition is happening around the world. Got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Rohit Nagaraj from Centrum Broking Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my questions are on uh, CMC. Uh, so first, uh, you know, uh, given that last year the business was impacted because of the lower demand from the agro side, uh, given that a, a new calendar year has started, so how are we looking in terms of uh, volumes which are committed by clients for the calendar year 24? And uh, even on the pricing front, has there been any changes from what they were last year and how these have changed uh, during the course of uh, 2024? Thank you. So I'll, I'll answer the pricing uh, part first. Uh, no, pricing doesn't get impacted by uh, these downturns. Many of these are, uh, you know, a formula-based prices, and uh, you know, don't really change um, year on year, um, you know, due to uh, uh, any fluctuations in terms of supply and demand. Uh, of, of course, pricing will be impacted, linked to raw material costs, and if there are movements in those, there will be a pass-through or. A, um, or um, um, either a recovery or um, or um, or a reduction um, linked to you know changes in uh, uh, raw material uh, prices. Uh, so pricing doesn't get impacted um, on the so so on on the volumes again the impact of the demand um, issues were on our existing products you know um, which were which are which are let's say let's call it established products which went through an inventory uh, correction. Uh, the products that we are making in the in the new multi-purpose block, um, one of them, for example, is a new molecule that the customer has launched. So it did not, you know, see any impact due to uh, this inventory correction. Um, the other molecule is a fairly established uh, molecule. We won't see any impact of that because we are starting at a much lower um, level than the overall demand. Uh, so we don't again. Uh, that didn't get impacted, uh, you know, due to the active demand. So, in terms of the products that we are making in the new production block, you know, we don't anticipate or we have not seen any uh, impact um, um, due to the due to the slowdown uh, for the reasons I've outlined. Sure. Uh, so, the second question is: uh, You also mentioned that uh, currently there are 15 number of products which are in pipeline. So, all these products are agro-based, or are there any other, um, you know, uh, end applications that we are looking at? And how do we generally look at the commercialization schedule of uh, these products? I mean, every single year we'll have how many products which could be commercialized? Thank you. Yeah. So, some of them are agro. Uh, a few are pharmaceutical, and some are uh, non-pharma, uh, other fine chemicals. Uh, so that's the the mix we have in terms of the over 15 molecules that are um, 
uh, that are in the in in the pipeline. Uh, and your second question was, um, this, I'm just trying to recall. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, how many would be commercialized generally in a year? Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. So, so last year we commercialized three of them, right? And uh, you know, we just announced. Um, uh, so this year, um, I think um, we anticipate another two to three. Uh, you know, if not more, to be. You know, we have we have um, we have some initial trial campaigns uh, for uh, three to four more um, this year. So that's you know, so the the ones that are in the pipeline. So some of them, the 15 over the 15, I anticipate another three to four. Um, being uh, commercialized, or at least we will make some uh, small campaigns um, uh, this year, and and then they will ramp up over the next few years. So, uh, sir, last question, uh, two parts. One is uh, in terms of the LOIs and uh, the new facility. Uh, how much of revenues have we booked in SY24? And another question, I, it might be uh, you know live or uh, maybe I don't have uh, much information about the scene. So you mentioned the fourth LOI will have uh, 500 crores of peak uh, revenue potential. Uh, if you could just uh, give us an understanding of the first three LOIs in terms of what could be the peak uh, revenue potential for each of them. Thank you. Uh, Rohit, uh, uh, just to, on the second point, it's actually not peak uh, revenue potential. Uh, it's the next four years, what is the revenue generation that is expected from that product? That's what we have indicated. And that will gradually grow. The peak revenue potential for the last LOI will be around 200 to 225 crores. Uh, that's the number. As far as the other uh, the LOIs that we have signed, uh, the peak revenue potential will be somewhere around on an annual basis. I'm not talking about the total revenue. On an annual basis, peak revenue potential will be around 550 crores. Right. And uh, sorry, my apologies for uh, misunderstanding the earlier statement. So in terms of the first three alloys, uh, what is the total size of the uh, 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 alloy that we are looking at, similar to what you said about 500 crores for the fourth one? Uh, cumulative will be somewhere around uh, 1,200 crores. Sure. And just one clarification, uh, during FI24, what was the revenues which were booked? Uh, uh, like, I would ideally not like to get into the individual products sure. in a way that... No worries. No worries. Thanks for uh, answering all the questions and all the best. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ranjit from IISL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just touching on the custom manufacturing business, uh, earlier we had a aspiration to reach a thousand or course of revenues in two to three years' time. Uh, with the situation in the global lockdown, uh, how does that change? We still hold that uh, number, Ranjit. Uh, uh, so uh, like Krishna was saying, that the impact that we have seen is primarily on our some of our existing products, is where we have seen the impact. Uh, the new products are ramping up well, and significant part of the revenue was expected only from any of the new products. So we still hold that uh, uh, number. We don't uh, uh, sort of see any change in our view on that. Okay. And the four LOIs that you have just said would be a collected revenues of 200 crores. Uh, that itself should uh, uh, take care of our aspirations. That's a cumulative. On an annual basis, these four LOIs will have to roughly around 700 uh, crores of revenue on an annual basis. And these are only the four LOIs, and we do have other products also already commercialized as well as on the pipeline. All of this will certainly contribute towards the thousand crores that we are talking about. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, so yeah, there was a question on the um, custom synthesis business. So in terms of your um, aspiration, if you look at the percentage of revenue coming from that, what is your 
um, targets here over the next two to three years and how much incremental investments you have to make and how does it change your overall blended ROC profile? Now, like I mentioned for the earlier uh, question, our target in terms of revenue is uh, roughly around uh, 1,000 crores. That's what we are looking at. As far as the investments uh, is concerned, uh, investments like Kishupar mentioned earlier, uh, we will evaluate that in the coming quarter. And then uh, depending on the capacity utilization, based on the invoice that we have signed and some of the potentials that we do have, we will evaluate in a quarter and then we will come back with our thoughts on uh, where the capacity utilization is and how do we see this with investment plans. So yeah, right now, if you look at FY24 revenue, or broad ballpark, you're talking about 20, 25% of the revenue coming from TSM. Is that a correct assessment? Uh, we have sort of indicated a revenue of uh, 284 crores for the CSM business. Roughly around 300 crores is a CSM business. So if you look at Kempla standalone business, yes, maybe uh, slightly below 25%. But on a combined basis, it will form uh, less than 10% of the overall uh, revenue pool of the consolidated entity. So, uh, in just a follow-up thought, in terms of your uh, margins from the CSM business uh, and your working capital requirement, can you share some thoughts on that? How would the EBITDA margins be in the you know, CSM business? Uh, and uh, what would be the working capital requirement? Uh, would it be in the 90, 100 days net working capital or would it be higher? Now, on the CNN business side, generally the industry agro campaign side reports uh, EBITDA margin somewhere between 23 and 25%. And on a steady state basis, I think we should also report the same. Uh, of course, during the ramp up phase, uh, there will be sort of the learnings. And of course, during that period, it could be slightly soft. But on a steady state basis, as we sort of ramp up both these uh, phases, uh, we should reach uh, that level of uh, uh, EBITDA margins. And uh, as far as the working capital requirement is concerned, I think it varies from product to product and customer to customer. So it would be difficult for me to categorize and say it is 90 days, it is 60 days. Or so it depends on the product and depends on the material required. So it would keep varying. Uh, no, as an outer limit, can you give us some indication? What is the kind of you know uh, thought process on working capital? Because that is a bit of a various, uh, variable in the CSM business. Uh, we understand, but uh, like I said, the, these are new products and they are evolving. So uh, it will be difficult for me to sort of give one number uh, because there, there are a number of portfolio products that we are working on. Uh, I think it will need for us some time to reach a reasonable steady state for us to talk about uh, uh, working capital on a steady state basis. I thank hope you I would appreciate Yeah, thank you very much, sir. I wish you all the best. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, Neerav, and thank you everyone for joining us today on this earnings call. As always, we appreciate your interest in Kempla Sanmar, and if you have any further queries, please do not hesitate to contact SGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. Thank you, and good day. Thank you very much, sir. On behalf of Kempla Sanmar Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.